This is Andy Fisher, WNEW News, on a rainy night in Manhattan. The forecast tells us it may dry out for a bit tomorrow, but the rain will be back tomorrow night and Saturday. The British are likely to have their first female prime minister before very long. We'll have an election update, tell you about the NFL draft, the Mets' loss to the Giants, and, of course, Game 4 of the Stanley Cup semifinals. On the news and sports wrap-up, after the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. I'm certain, Grandmother. Grandmother. Oh, I love hearing you say it. It means that I'm something to someone. Finally, after all these years, there's a human link in my life. I'm not alone anymore. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. It's question and answer time. I know the questions, you know the answers, or do you? First question, who is the detective hero created by a famous female British mystery writer? Mm, I don't know. Right. Second question, which author was the creator of Sam Spade and a close friend of Lillian Hellman? Uh, Martin Mayonnaise. Correct for a thousand bobolinks. Third question, what is the name of the greatest killer of all time? Oh, oh, Al Capone. Bugsy Malone. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, 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 bullets. Correct for a thousand bobolinks. The greatest killer of all time is heart and blood vessel disease. It's no joke. More people die of heart and blood vessel disease each year than of all other causes of death combined. We'd like to change that. We're the American Heart Association. Call us to find out where free blood pressure screenings are being held. Remember, we're fighting for your life. This is Cicely Tyson. In a small rural community some hundred miles inland of a southern seaboard state, Indian summer has lingered long. October is nearly gone, and still the sun-heavy air blows across the tall grass, making it shimmer and sway like the distant and undulating ocean. Then it appears on the horizon, large and yellow, high-flying and racing, responding wildly to the air currents far above. A kite, magnificent and proud. Following the taut white string downward from it, we find two figures running with the kite. Alex Vevey is 17 years old. He is tall and slender. His strides are long and loping, the easy and smooth movements of youth. His much smaller companion keeps abreast of him, taking two steps for every one of his, holding her fine boned face up to watch every motion of the kite, her long silver hair fanning out behind her. After running up a gently sloping hill, she falters. Her eyes close. She loses sight of the kite and her hand goes to her constricting chest. Alex runs on, unaware, and then, realizing that he's alone, he stops and turns back to her. Go on. on. Don't stop now. Are you all right? Yes. Yes. Go on, Alex. It's the best we've ever done. Don't stop now. Eugenia Granville stands atop the rise and watches her grandson turn and run swiftly away from her. Her strength can be clearly seen in her face, but now there is fear there, too. Fear of the pain which has come again. Look how high it is now! With her right hand pressed over her heart, Eugenia Granville waves her left arm encouragingly toward Alex, unable to speak because of the pain. A silver-haired spectator standing alone endures familiar intimations of mortality as she salutes the exuberance of youth in the running figure of her grandson. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio.
Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Other Grandmother, by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Corey Burton, Virginia Gregg, and Jean Howell. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Separate ablaze with color fireworks. Yet made of 100% cotton pointel knit to keep you cool and comfortable all summer. And just because they're natural doesn't mean they're neutral. Discover a gently gathered skirt, a cap sleeve shirt, a tank top, all bursting in colors, just waiting to be mixed or matched. For a day in the sunshine or a night under the stars, color fireworks is what's happening in Mrs. Pointel Separate. For Mother's Day, give Mama a hand. Yeah! With handy appliances from Sears. Prices have been cut on Sears' best food processor. 14-speed blender with jars and a push-button self-cleaning broiler oven. Save money and she'll save time on ironing day with a spray steam-and-dry self-cleaning iron. So give Mom a helping hand on Mother's Day and save at Sears. Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Eastern, Central, or Pacific time, Mother's Day is an important time. Remember Mom with a timely example of sophisticated design. A Seiko watch from Sears. Seiko has a reputation you can count on in styles that range from sporty with leather wristbands to elegant bracelet watches in white or yellow gold color cases. Choose Mom's precision-made Seiko with 17 jewel or quartz movements from Sears. But hurry, Mother's Day is coming May 13th. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Watching her grandson Alex manipulate the flight of his high-flying kite, Eugenia Granville stands alone on the rise of the hill. She breathes deeply, trying to ease the pain that tears at her heart. Now she wonders not if but when it will come again, and if she can bear it. She looks to Alex and smiles as he deftly and expertly reels in the kite and heads back toward her. Gran? Gran, did you see? I did. It was higher than ever before. Uh, you okay, Gran? Oh, fine. I, I just wanted to stand back and watch you. Oh, maybe you're tired. Oh, tired. Well, maybe you, not me. Uh, you think Mother has dinner waiting for us? Probably. And I'll bet she's mad as a wet hen. Your mother just doesn't appreciate the fine art of cut flying. My own daughter, I can't understand it. Uh, should we go back? In a, in a minute, Alex. You sure you're all right, Gran? Of course I am. Just look around you, Alex. We won't have many more days like this one. Summer's almost over. Yes, summer. Alex, when your father died, it was a very sad time. He, he was a fine man. You were too young to know him, and, and that's a shame. But when you and your mother came here to live with me after his death, that marked the beginning of the happiest days of my life. Graham, why are you talking like this? Like something was about to end. Something is ending. What? Summer, Alex. Summer. Let's go back to the house now. The boy holding the folded yellow kite and the woman with her hand to her heart begin walking slowly down the gentle hill. The sun is setting and the sky is turning pale before it darkens into night. A cold gust of wind has come in suddenly. That night, Eugenia Granville, Alex's beloved Gran, dies in her sleep. Three days after the small and solemn funeral, Alex returns home from school to find his mother in his grandmother's room, standing amid piles of clothes and shoes. The room is chaos. Alex, thinking of its peaceful beauty and order when Gran was alive, angrily approaches his mother. What are you doing? I'm sorting out Gran's things. Why? Because this is something that has to be done. Why? Because, Alex... That's not a reason. 
That's not an answer. I know you're upset. I'm trying to make allowances for you, but I won't have you speaking to me this way. I am your mother. And Gran was your mother. Why are you doing this? Can't you just leave the room alone and her things? Why do you have to go pawing through them, divvying them up? Alex, there are people who could use these clothes. They need them. It's foolish and worse, very selfish, to want to let them just hang in the closet when they could be used and appreciated. But they're Gran's. Gran is dead, Alex. You have to accept that. Don't you even care at all? Of course I care. We all mourn in different ways, Alex. I'm grieving for Gran in my way. You can't see it. Maybe you're too young to understand. I'm not too young. Why do you always say things like that? Gran never did. All right, Alex. You and Gran were great friends. You loved her and she loved you. Well, now Gran is gone and you're left with me. I know you don't like that, but you're going to have to live with it. Mother, why don't you stop for a while? Come for a walk with me. No, I want to finish up. Mother, please. I have to get this done. Why? Because I have to. After my father died, did you give away all his things too? Is that why I have nothing of his? Nothing of him at all? You have everything of his. You're a replica of him. Is that why you can't look at me, Mother? Look at me! You are so like him. Shouldn't that make you happy? Should. It should, but it doesn't. It makes me sad. It makes me remember. And I don't want to remember. It doesn't help. It only hurt. He shouldn't have died. It, it was all beginning for him. And because it was a foggy night and someone crossed over to the wrong side of the highway, did he have to die? I won't remember. There's no good in it. But I didn't give his things away. Where are they? They're up in the attic, in boxes. Everything, his papers, his clothes, pictures, books, everything. I couldn't stand to see them, and I... And I couldn't stand to have them gone, either. Mother, come with me. Where? Up to the attic. No. I can't. All right. If that's the way you want it. All right. Why did you wait so long to tell me? Did it ever occur to you that even if you didn't, I might want to see his things? Not everyone is like you, Mother. I'm not. I'm going up to the attic. I wanted to be sure you were ready, Alex. I'm sorry. I saved everything for you, Alex. Everything. You'll see. And now a special message of interest to shoppers across America from Sears. Everybody has been talking about inflation. Well, here's what Sears is helping to do about it. Starting the 1st of May, all prices in Sears Spring General Catalog will be reduced 5%. This means a discount of 5% will automatically be taken off the price of anything and everything you order from the Spring General Catalog between May 1st and July 31st, 1979. Also beginning in May, Sears retail stores across the nation will reduce their regular price of selected items, which means you can expect even greater values. In addition, for limited periods of time, Sears will sharply reduce the price on scores of items in our retail stores. Watch for these Sears super values on TV, radio, and magazines, and your local paper, and you'll benefit from price cuts each month. Everyone wants to control inflation. These are some of the ways Sears is helping to do it. Sears, where America shops for value. And she leaps ahead wearing Sears Action Playwear for juniors. They're saucy yellow bibbed overalls with a striped tank top underneath. What a look! But wait, another girl in bright blue pleated shorts and rugby-style shirt hops up from behind. Ladies and gentlemen, who win this leapfrog race? Both look like winners in these cool cotton tops and bottoms of cotton and polyester. All bright summer wow colors. And they're, they're tied! Sears Junior Action Playwear for championship looks. At most larger Sears retail stores. There is no question Alex felt the loss of his grandmother. She had been his closest friend, his confidant, the one person with whom he could share his thoughts. There was an empty space, therefore, in his heart, a space he had to fill. Mother! Mother! In the kitchen! 
Sit down, Alex. Dinner's almost ready. I'm not very hungry. Sit down. I fixed a good dinner for you. Mother? Go ahead and eat, Alex. Don't wait for me. I'll be there in a minute. Mother, I... Do you want some milk or tea? Oh, I made a big pitcher of iced tea this afternoon. Would you rather have that? The milk is fine. Well, thank you. Mother, I, I wanted eat, to... Eat, Alex, for goodness sake. Don't wait for me. I said I wasn't hungry. All right. <laughs> Don't eat. You're nothing but bones. You look like a scarecrow. Well, Mother, will you listen to me, please? About what? You want me to listen to you about this afternoon? We both said things we shouldn't have. It's forgotten. No, it's not. Please sit down, Mother. Stop fussing and fiddling. Sit down and talk to me, please. All right, Alex. Mother, my father's family... He had none. He was an only child. His parents died when he was very young. He was raised by an aunt. She died when he was 19. Are you sure of that? Well, he may have been 18 when she died. No, I mean, are you sure about his parents? Well, yes. Why? Why? I found something up in the attic today. What did you find? A letter. It was to father, and it was from a nurse. She was writing to him about his mother. Oh, no, it couldn't be. You must have misunderstood it. No, I didn't. I read that letter over three times. It seems to me his aunt was ill and in the hospital when she died. Well, perhaps the nurse just assumed that his aunt was his mother. It would be an easy enough mistake to make. I'm sure that's all it was. And did you try some of the pot roast? I think it's especially good tonight. Mother, it wasn't Father's aunt that the nurse was writing about. What do you mean? That's the only reasonable explanation. Your father's mother died when he was a little baby. The nurse couldn't possibly have been writing about her. My father's aunt, what did she die of? Well, I don't remember. Didn't Father ever say? Try to remember. Why is this so important to you? Please try to remember. Uh, let me think. It seems to me that your father once mentioned her having a weak heart. So, heart trouble, I guess that was it. Then there was no mistake. That letter wasn't about his aunt. It was about my father's mother. My other grandmother. Alex, I don't know what you're talking about. You're not making any sense. They don't put people with weak hearts in mental hospitals. Mental hospital? That's right. The letter was written by a nurse in a mental hospital. It was dated 1965. My grandmother didn't die when my father was a baby. She was alive in 1965. She may still be alive right now. And, Mother, I'm going to find out. I'm going to that hospital. She's probably been gone for years, Alex. That letter is 14 years old. I don't care how old it is. I'm going. Are you going to ask me not to? Are you going to try to stop me from finding my grandmother? No. But I wish that you'd let me call there first before we go. We? Yes, I, I'm going with you. All right. But I don't want you to call first. I just want to go. Fine. Do you want to know what the nurse wrote in the letter? Well, of course I do. Well, she wrote telling Father that his mother didn't belong in the hospital and that she was fit to come home. Uh, why did he leave her there, Mother? Why did he tell you that she was dead? Why did my father leave his own mother in a mental hospital pretending that she was dead when he could have had her with him? Why, Mother? Oh, those are very difficult questions. I don't know why your father told me that his mother was dead, but he... he must have had his reasons, and good ones. I do know why he didn't take her out of the hospital in 1965. Why? Don't you remember... Your father died that year, on March 10th, 1965. The letter was dated March 7th, and the postmark was on the 8th. Well, he must have received it the day he died. Then you think he would have gone to her, taken her out, if he'd lived? Oh, I'm sure of it. If what the nurse wrote to him was true, and his mother really was able to leave the hospital, I know that your father would have brought her home. Yeah, but why did he lie? Why did he tell everyone that my grandmother was dead? I don't know. I can't answer. I suppose, Alex, that only your father could have told us why. I wish I could know. I wish he were here with us. I've wished that every day for 14 years, Alex. Where is this hospital? Oh, not far. Just outside Washington. We'll drive up this weekend. Thank you, Mother. Just think... I've still got a grandmother. Sears.
Rogers Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way. And if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. Hey, buddy, can you give a fella a break? Sorry, fella, I only give at the office. I'm not looking for a handout. What can I do for you? Help save my life and breath. Do you need mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing? I'm not the type. No, but you're smoking. And your smoke is hitting me where I breathe. And what with an allergy and pollution, you're not helping any. Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Sure, but the fact is that your smoke is getting in my eyes and nose and throat. And that's not a good song for my lungs. Well, you could always move away. I do, and then there's another one puffing away in my face. How about a deal? Like the Lung Association says, smoke if you must, but make smoking a private affair. Or, or quit. Secondhand smoke is truly offensive for non-smokers. Well, I'll give it a try. I wish you would, otherwise they're going to hang a tag on you. A tag? Yeah, cigarettes are a health hazard and so are you. Gotcha, buddy. Now about that handout... Save it. Let me give you one. Your lung association says that giving up smoking is a matter of life and breath. They drove silently, Alex and his mother... Between them, the sudden and startling discovery that a patient in a mental hospital, an unknown woman, was about to enter their lives. Neither of them had known of her existence. They would not even be able to recognize her face, and yet her presence was strongly felt as they arrived at the hospital on the outskirts of the city. nice here. I'm surprised, too. It's very pretty, not at all the way I imagined it. That looks like the administration building over there. Mother, do you think she's here somewhere? I don't know, but we'll find out soon enough. I feel kind of funny. Strange, you know? Oh, look at that lady walking over there. Oh, that could be her, and I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't know my own grandmother. Come on, Alex. The answer is inside. Oh, uh, may I help you? Possibly. We've just recently learned that a relative of ours may be a patient here. We're trying to locate her. We just found this letter. Alex, show the nurse the letter. Oh, but this letter is 14 years old. I know, it must seem odd, but we did just find the letter two days ago. Is there still a nurse Benson here? Why, yes, she's our head nurse now. Uh, could we talk to her? She wrote the letter. Oh, yes, I can see that. And the patient's name was... Uh... Is uh, Lucinda Veve. Oh, that's right. I, I see now. Well, my duties are mostly here at the front desk. This is a very large facility. I don't know all the patients by name. But do you know that name? Is it familiar at all? No, I'm sorry it's not. But that doesn't really mean anything. Now, if you'll just take a seat, I'll try to get a little more information for you. Well, thank you, nurse. Come on, Alex. We'll mm. sit over here. You were right. We should have called first. No, I'm glad we came like this. I think more than just a telephone call was required. And Alex, even if she's not here any longer, at least you'll have seen where your grandmother once lived. I think that's very important. Yeah. She's here, though. I really believe that she is. I hope so, Alex. If she is, Mother... Yes? Can we take her home with us? That's not for me to decide, Alex. But would you want her... Hello there. I'm Nurse Benson. I'm Marie Vevey, and this is my son, Alex. Nurse Benson, I have your letter. 
Yes, I remember it very well. I never received an answer. My father died, that's why. We're answering now, Nurse Benson. Is my grandmother here? Yes, she is. I knew it! I knew it, Mother! Yes, Alex, I know you did. Nurse, could we, uh... I mean, would it be possible for us to see her? But of course we'll see her! Alex! Yes, yes, you will see her. But I would like to give you a little background first. Lucinda is your grandmother? Is that right, Alex? Yes, my father's mother. You're very lucky. She's a lovely lady, and I'm so glad you finally found her. You said in your letter to my father that she didn't belong here, that she should be home. Yes, I remember quite clearly writing that letter. I went against the orders of my superiors here when I did it. Nurse Benson, what exactly is wrong with Mrs. Veve? Exactly, you want to know. I'm afraid where the mind is concerned, there are very few exact facts to be found, but... In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with her. Lucinda Vive was the victim of very cruel circumstances. She was admitted to this hospital sometime in the early 1930s. You mean that my grandmother has been here for more than 40 years? Yes. Her original admittance records can't be found. There was a fire here in 1946. The papers were most likely burned at that time. Probably Lucinda came here in, well, 1933, 1934. I've spoken with her about it, and she says it's hazy that she can't quite remember. You see, she was very ill. Physically ill? Yes, yes, she had typhoid fever. But then why did they bring her here? Well, it was the depression. Lucinda hadn't been in this country very long. Her English wasn't good. She'd been living with her sister... Her husband had disappeared. He went looking for work one day and never returned. Lucinda was left with her baby son and her sisters. Then she got sick. She was frightened. Her sister wanted her to go to a doctor. She didn't want to go, but she was terrified that her little baby might catch the illness from her. So, finally, she went. She had no money. She couldn't seem to make the doctor understand her. She was labeled mentally retarded and brought here. How could it have happened? Well, evidently it happened quite frequently in those days. They didn't have the tolerance of the time for people like Lucinda, so they put them away. Seemed the easiest solution to them, I guess. Did anyone... uh, Did my father ever come to visit her? When I first came here in 1963, I noticed Lucinda right away... She was always reading or sewing. She never had any visitors. As I came to know her and she came to trust me, I found out why. Why? That's just what I asked her one day. And she told me that it had been many years since she'd had her one and only visitor. Her sister came to see her after she had been here for nearly a year. Her sister brought news of her little son how fast he was growing and what a fine American boy he was going to be. She obviously had come to love the boy very much and wanted him for her own. She convinced Lucinda that it would be best if she told the boy that his mother was dead instead of the shameful truth that she was in a mental hospital. Your grandmother didn't think there was any way out of here for her, and she wanted her baby to be loved and cared for, so she consented to the story. Her sister never returned after that day. That's why Lucinda had no visitors. Till I wrote that letter, everyone believed she was dead. And the letter was delivered to a man who was dead. Or would be dead shortly after he received it. I never knew. If it wasn't for Alex, we wouldn't be here now. Can we see her now? Oh, yes, of course. D- does she speak English well? I mean, did she learn here? Oh, yes, yes. She works as a seamstress. She's very good. We'll go to her cottage now. Uh, there are ten women to a cottage. I'll describe her to you so you'll know her when you see her. No, no, please, Nurse Benson, don't do that. I want to try and find her myself. I understand completely, Alex. Well, shall we go now? I think I'll wait here. Why, Mother? This time, this first time, should be yours alone, Alex. I'll come later. All right, Mother. (sighs) 
I don't know how to thank you. You've answered so many of my questions today, Nurse Benson. About your grandmother, you mean? Yes, about her. And one very important one about my father. One that I didn't believe would ever be answered. A couple of days ago, when I first found your letter, I was really confused. Everyone had always told me what a great guy my father was. And all of a sudden, he didn't seem so great. How could a guy lie about his mother, say she was dead when she wasn't, and be so great? I just couldn't figure it. I almost hated him for it. Now I know that he thought she was dead. I guess he really was what everybody says he was, a great guy. So you see, Nurse Benson, you're not only giving me my grandmother, you gave me back my father. You're a very unusual boy, Alex. You think so? Why? Well, most young people are only interested in themselves and in being young. They don't want to know about being old. And they don't want anything to do with old people. This is her cottage. Well, looks like some of the ladies are going for a walk. Uh, Nurse Benson? Yes, Alex? Uh, the small lady in blue, with the gray braids wrapped, uh, sort of like a crown on her head. Yes. Is that her? Is that my grandmother? It is. Then, uh, is it all right if I... Uh, can I go to her? Yes, but go slowly. Don't try to push too many years into a moment, Alex. No. Go slowly, please. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Strawberries, stoneware with hand-painted strawberries, 45-piece sets plus extra serving bowl. Sears Strawberries. Sears hand-painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks and durable, this dishwasher-safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries, Sears stoneware with hand-painted strawberries. At most larger Sears retail stores. Come with me on a magic carpet ride to view Sears' Kismet Classic Collection of rugs with the beauty and luxury of genuine oriental creations. Behold, 13 exquisite patterns inspired by great masterpieces of Persia and the Orient. Look upon all nine sizes of Kismet Classic rugs, each of a 100% virgin worsted wool pile. Deep, dense, luxurious. Riding a rug is okay, but decorating with Kismet Classics is heaven on earth. At most larger Sears retail stores, Cicely Tyson again And here's the concluding act of The Other Grandmother Hello Hello Those are beautiful flowers over there The yellow ones? Yeah What are they called? Chrysanthemums Oh, that's right. I remember now. My grandmother used to always tell me the names of flowers. She knew them all, I think. Are you allowed to pick them? Oh, yes. But I never do. Why? Oh, I love them as they are. <laughs> There's no need for me to pick them and put them in a little glass jar, possess them. I wouldn't love them any more in my room than I do as they are right now. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Are you new here? Oh, I'm not a patient. I came to visit someone. That's nice. What is your name? Alex. Alex? Yes. Short for Alexander, I suppose. Uh, no, my name is Alexis. Oh. Well, that's a very beautiful name. It's my favorite, in fact. I once knew someone a long time ago named... Alexis? I know. Your son. How could you know that? Your son's name was Alexis Veve. And I am Alexis Veve Jr. 
I'm your grandson. My grandson? Yes. My grandson. <laughs> Alexis. Alexis. Oh, I can't believe it. How did you find me? Oh, that's quite a story, Grandmother. Oh, your father, is he here too? Oh, no. Where is he? He's, uh... He's dead. He died when I was very young. My baby boy. That's all I ever had of him. And that's all I will ever have of him now. They brought me here, Alexis, when your father was so little. I know. Uh, Nurse Benson told me. Oh, to think that he grew into a man, had a son, lived his life, and now he's gone. I never knew any of it. All I have is a memory of a sweet, tiny baby that I loved. He thought you were dead, Grandmother. Yeah, I know. My sister and I agreed to that. It seemed the only way. I, I didn't think I would ever be allowed to leave this place. Well, Nurse Benson thinks you could. Did you know about the letter she wrote to Father? Oh, yes. I knew of it. I waited for an answer for so long, but it never came. He never came. Well, don't blame him, Grandmother. He died before he could, but he would have, I know. I found the nurse's letter just a few days ago, and now I've come for you. Oh, th this is too wonderful. I know that I'll wake up and find that I've been dreaming again. Oh, I've been dreaming for so long, Alexis. <laughs> it's not a dream. It's real, I promise. Will you come home with Mother and me? Will they let me go? They'll have to. They'll just have to. Is your mother here now? Yes. And does she want me to, Alexis? Yes. Are you sure of that? I'm certain, Grandmother. Grandmother. Oh, I love hearing you say it. It means that I'm something to someone. Finally, after all these years, there's a human link in my life. I'm not alone anymore. Never again, Grandmother. Let's go and speak with Ellen. That's Nurse Benson. Ellen will arrange it. She'll help us. I know she will. <laughs> Big day is finally here, Lucinda. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Oh, I only wish it had been years ago. It's a miracle to me. I'd given up all hope, Ellen. I know. I'm going to miss you. And I'm going to miss you. Oh, there are many things and people that I miss here. After all, it's been a kind of home... Forty-five years is a long time. It's a lifetime for some people. Are you a little frightened, Lucinda? More than a little. Here, I know everything. Out there, I... I don't know what's waiting for me. You know one thing that is. Alex. Yes. Yes, Alex. Do you know, Ellen, that he's written me nearly every day? Lucinda... You know you have nothing to fear out there. You're going to do just fine. I think so, too. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, goodbye, Lucinda. Good luck. Bye, Bye, dear. Bye, dear. Bye. Bye. Anybody home? In here, Alex. Hello, Mother. Grandmother. What are you two doing? Lucinda is showing me an embroidery stitch that I've never seen before. It's beautiful, Lucinda. Oh, I learned it years ago from a woman who was in the hospital with me. She came from Greece. She barely spoke when she first arrived. She sat huddled in a corner, rocking back and forth, back. And for oh, the... Grandmother, let's not talk about that place. All right, Alexis. Alex, if your grandmother wants no, to... No, 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 it's all right. Those days are past. And today is an anniversary. You've been home with us for exactly a month. 
the most wonderful month of my life. There's a terrific wind coming up. Would you like to go kite flying, Grandmother? Well, I don't think I've ever flown a kite. I remember reading a book once about a boy who loved to fly kites. Well, this is the boy. He and Gran used to spend hours at it. Will you come with me, Grandmother? I'd love to. Won't you come too, Marie? No, thank you. I'm going to try and master this stitch, Lucinda. Dinner's at five, Alex, remember? Yes, Mother. I I'll be right back. I'm going to get the kite. Lucinda, it's not easy for me to say some things, but I've been wanting to tell you how happy I am that you're here with us. Thank you, Marie. I'm happy, too. Family relationships are a little difficult for me still. I was alone for so long. I understand. I truly do. Well, here it is. Are we ready? Yes, Let's go. Remember, dinner at five. Oh, there's a great spot over by the pond. A big clearing and not too many trees to get tangled up in. Gran and I must have lost about ten kites and trees until we discovered this place. Lead the way, Alexis. of bear right now. You should see it in the spring. I'll oh, just wait until spring and then fall when all the leaves are turning. Now, what we'll do is run up that hill and once the kite is up, we'll just follow it. Wherever it takes us, we'll go and we'll fly it as high as we possibly can. Alexis, I'm going to sit right here and watch you. Why? Why won't you come with me? Gran always did. Um, uh, except, uh, that last day when she just watched me, too. Alexis, I'm not Gran. I know that. And I can't do what she did. I'm sorry that I can't. But we had very different lives, she and I. Mm -hmm. Lives that made us very different people. Gran gave you things that I can't. But I can give you things that she couldn't. Things that only I can give. Well, watch me then. Just watch me. I'm going to take it up into the clouds. Look! Look! It's going to go the highest yet. The highest ever. Look, Gran. Look! Alexis? Alexis, let it go. No! No! It'll go higher still. It will if you let it go. It's gone. Why'd you ask me to do it? You can still see it, Alexis. Look. Look how beautiful it is floating free up there. But it's gone. I can't hold it anymore. I can't get it back. It's not mine anymore. It will always be yours, Alexis. But there comes a time when you have to let go. Holding on to everything tightly with your hands doesn't make it yours. They locked me away and held me in that hospital for so many years. But I'd never belong to them, Alexis. That kite. That kite will be yours forever because of the days it will make you remember when you think of it. The times it will give back to you when you recall it. But you can't duplicate the past. That's what some old people try to do. And that's what breaks their hearts. You're too young for that, Alexis. It was time to let go. Free the kite and yourself. So you could reach out for other things. Yeah. You're not really talking about the kite, are you? No. You're talking about you and me and Gran. I did want you to be Gran, didn't I? Yes, I think you did. But how did you know? In the hospital, I learned not to listen so much to what people said, but to watch their faces. Usually the faces were far more eloquent 
than the words. Uh, Grandmother, you didn't hate being in the hospital, did you? I did. And I didn't. I guess... I guess I'm a little like that kite up there. Now that I'm free, I can look down from a different viewpoint and I can see things a little more fondly. But it was so unfair. They took almost your whole life away from you. (laughs) But not quite all, Alexis. I have a life now and I have an appreciation of it that I would never have had otherwise. I never knew freedom. So I can love and prize it as someone who has always had it. Never could. You can give me things that no one else could, Grandmother. I hope so. Well, it's getting late. Your mother expects us for dinner. Isn't that wonderful? Is it? Well, of course it is. She's waiting. She's watching at the window just for us, Alexis. I guess that is kind of wonderful. I know. We'll give Mom a Sears Best Food Processor with attachment. Oh, sure, money bags. Listen, Sears chopped $10 off, so it's only $49.99. Oh, three of us could buy it. But would Mom like a Sears food processor? Sure. Complete with four attachments, it can quickly knead bread, chopped meat, shred cheese, puree tomato. Hey, pizza! <laughs> Sears Best Food Processor, only $49.99. Save $10 till May 26th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Separate the flames with color fireworks. Yet made of 100% cotton point tail knit to keep you cool and comfortable all summer. And just because they're natural doesn't mean they're neutral. Discover a gently gathered skirt, a cap sleeve shirt, a tank top, all bursting in colors, just waiting to be mixed or matched. For a day in the sunshine or a night under the stars, color fireworks is what's happening in Mrs. Point Tail Separates. A kiss good night, and your gift of Sears Nightwear will send Mom sweetly into dreamland this Mother's Day. They're winsome, billowy nightgowns and sprightly PJs. Or complete the appeal with a short or long dressing gown. Ruffles, spaghetti straps, prints, or solids. Just a few dreamy ways to choose Sears Nightwear. All airy nylon trico, loosely shaped for sleeping comfort. This Mother's Day, give Mom pretty nightwear from Sears. And sweet dreams. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Other Grandmother was written by Pamela Russell, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Corey Burton, Virginia Gregg, and Jean Howell. Also heard were Irene Tedro, Barbara Townsend, and Paula Winslow. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.